that we have a tremendous amount to learn uh, uh, and unlearn. A, a kind of a, uh, a way I look at it is, uh, well, I see, I see there are two, two real uh, facets of, of this. One of them is the technology, which I say it is here. You know, it's here. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's, it works. It's available. Yes, it can be improved. Yes, it can evolve. But it works right now. <clears throat> For people to live in homes that are absolutely carbon zero uh, and have, a, have a, you know, a totally soft footprint on the planet and give you all the amenities. It's not like living in you know, some teepee out in New Mexico. It's like uh, you have everything, flat screen TV, high speed internet, uh, you have all the goodies, and it can be done in a carbon neutral situation. That is not the problem. That's, that's the fun part. Uh, and, and evolving that is fun. And in a school situation, it would be great to teach those principles to kids as well as reading, writing, and arithmetic. But the other aspect of it is allowing it to happen, unlearning, uh, unlearning the... I don't know, the dogma, I guess, uh, that, uh, that is part of everybody's belief system now. And, it, and of course, it's the legislators and, the, and the, you know, the governors and the prime ministers and the parliament. And they, they in addition to their own axes to grind, uh, they won't, our rules and our regulations simply won't let us do it. You know, they, they're about things that aren't pertinent anymore. The way we have been living is over, and that means our rules and our regulations are over. All of our rules and our regulations are relative to stick frame houses that you pump heat into, and, and the sewage and water regulations are all about uh, endless amounts of energy and water, wasteful uh, methods of living. Those days are over due to population explosion and climate change and dwindling resources. Put all three of those together. You know, I don't care whether you call it global warming or whether people caused it or not, or I'm not into any of that argument. I'm just saying I'm into the unarguable aspects. You can't argue that we are not running out of fossil fuels. You can't argue that water is becoming scarce on a lot of places on the planet, and especially the underground taking water out of the underground does have ramifications. Uh, and so you can't argue that these things are, and you can't argue that population is growing. You know, look at, look at what used to be here 15 years ago. Uh, so you can't argue those things. And if you project them uh, into the future, we've got a problem. And so I'm just responding to them. The, I'm, I'm responding to the unarguable things. I've been working on it for 40 years. Uh, you know, climate change just got recognizable, you know, five years ago, really. Uh, so all of a sudden, we have been, we've been working, 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 trying to do this, and the planet has been deteriorating, deteriorating, deteriorating. Here we are in the right place at the right time. Uh, uh, not out of any real uh, intelligence, just out of circumstance. We, we have just been trudging along and all of a sudden we are meeting the, the situation at hand. Uh, and so, again, I say that the, the technology part is the fun part and uh, watching it evolve. I mean, it evolves every, every aspect of the, these buildings evolves every month, every week. You know, we'll make drawings, we'll write books, they're obsolete a month later. Not seriously obsolete still buy them, but, <laughs> uh, but they are, what I'm saying is uh, uh, there are aspects that just keep evolving. They, they get easier, they get more economical, and they perform better, they get more reliable. I, I compare it to a 49 Ford, you know. <laughs> you can drive a 49 Ford across the continent, uh, but it's a whole lot more fun to drive a Porsche. And so uh, these, these buildings do it right now, but they will get better and better. As a matter of fact, I had a, actually in the whole 40 years I've been doing this, I had the best comment the other day. I've had a lot of bad comments, believe me. But uh, 
I had the best positive comment the other day, unasked, you know, unsolicited or whatever. I was taking a, you know, an engineer, a gearhead, a, a pragmatic person through an earthship. And I explained everything to him like I'm going to explain to you. And he was going through it, and he saw it all, and he didn't say anything. It was quiet. And, and then after I pretty much was wrapping up the whole thing, he just blurted out. He said, what the world needs is one billion of these right now. And that was the best thing anybody had ever said. Uh, I thought I was going to cry. Uh, because he just recognized, you know, we're dealing with water. We're dealing with power. We're dealing with sewage. We're dealing with garbage. We're dealing with heating and cooling. And it all works. It's all available. There are six points to this. Uh, they are uh, obviously electricity from sun and wind, heating and cooling w via thermal mass and solar and uh, thermal uh, physics, uh, water harvesting, contained on-site treatment of sewage, uh, food production, food is getting to be, I, I, I haven't been here long enough to know yet, the lasagna was great, uh, but food is grown for money, and so there is the impetus for the production, and not only is it grown for money, it's shipped all over the place, so uh, food is not as good as it, as it should be, and so I'm saying if you're producing your own electricity and your own water and everything else, you may as well produce your own food. It goes hand in hand with the sewage system anyway. There's the five, and the, and the sixth is the use of byproducts of our society, recycled materials, whatever you want to call them. Uh, when, you use, uh, when you use a recycled product, or you use something the second time, like these are bottles that are making stained glass bricks, um, when you use a material, uh, a, 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 an already made material for a secondary use, you're obviously saving the energy that it would take to manufacture and ship a conventional building material. But that's not the end of it. You're also saving the money that it would take to get rid of the garbage. So, because every, every, the recycling efforts take energy to ship it and grind it up and move it and melt it back down or whatever. So the recycling takes energy and the manufacture of new materials takes energy. And so if you can use a material that we're throwing away, you're saving energy in both of those ways. And by using, housing is built largely of, you know, trees are a big part of building houses all over the world. If you can uh, reduce the timber that is used in housing, then you're affecting the environment. And that's what I keep finding out, is all of these things, these things I call seven point, uh, six points, uh, see I didn't take enough math, uh, the, these six points are all woven together. They're like uh, the body, the human body. You know, you got the circulatory system, the digestive system, the respiratory system, the nervous system. You got all these systems, and you can take them separate and have them do anything. They're all, your body and what it looks like is the result of six or eight systems all woven together. And you, what you look like is just the result of that. Uh, when you start doing something besides making a wood shack and pumping nuclear power into it, when you start making that shelter do everything, it becomes a machine, it becomes a body, it becomes something like the human body. And it is, uh, it is doing much more then, and you have less to say about what it looks like and what it, uh, uh, basically what it looks like, because it is a machine that is shaped by the way it encounters the environment around it, the physics and the biology around it, and the phenomena around it. So that's, that's kind of the the, the first thing I, I would say for people to do in, in trying to comprehend this is, is be advised that it is, it's not a house. That's why we call them earthships. Uh, it is something that we say uh, will sail on the seas of tomorrow, basically, uh, without a nuclear power plant.